Hello, fellow explorers. We want you to join us at our next movie club. It's called Getting Real with Siren Soapbox. Think book club, but less time consuming. And with a Siren Soapbox twist, each movie comes with a challenge. Join us on October 26 for discussion and some movie trivia about this quarter's movie, Big Fish. There's a link to the Eventbrite in the description, and it doesn't cost anything to join, but we won't turn down a donation toward a cup of coffee to keep us running. If we haven't convinced you to join us yet, take a listen to our second quarter movie club, where we discuss the movie Joe Dirt. We hope you enjoy. Are you bored living a mediocre life? We were too, and we know how to change that. Each week, we'll leave our comfort zones to explore a new topic, then step onto our soapboxes, a safe space to sound off on our latest adventure. Come explore with us. All opinions are welcome. This is a mindset. This is a lifestyle. This is Siren Soapbox. Hello, and welcome to Getting Real with Siren Soapbox. It's like a book club. And we add a Siren Soapbox twist and heavy movie theme challenge. If you like what you're listening to, join us for the next Getting Real. We have a group on Facebook called Getting Real with Siren Soapbox, or check us out over on Eventbrite and sign up there. Before we get started, we want to share a few things about Siren Soapbox. We are a podcast and we challenge each other to get out of our comfort zone. In addition to our podcast, we released a coloring book. It's available on Amazon. And we've got a magazine called Explore. And we're working on our first book. So stay tuned for all the information on that. We have some fun episodes coming up. We're going to be foraging for a meal in August. And we're going to be doing a blind taste test. Hopefully not on the things that we foraged. Because that could be bad. (laughs) If you're curious about what it's like to be on our podcast, head on over to our website and submit a challenge, and we'll invite you to join that episode. There's a link to sirensoapbox.com in the chat. Well, let's dive right in. Typically, each siren gets a soapbox, but since it's our getting real club, we are going to have everyone say their name and where they're from, and then tell us what you liked about the movie in general with a thumbs up or thumbs down rating. When you're finished, name the next person on your screen who has not introduced themselves. I'll go first. So hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I am from the Cincinnati, Ohio area. And uh, yeah, this movie was pretty okay. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> it was cute. Um, spoiler alert, they killed the dog. A poor dog and his poor testicles, and then they had to kill him. So I'm not a fan when they kill the dog, but um, it was pretty cool that he was always positive. And so for that, I will give it a thumbs up. And we'll have Jess go next. Hi, I'm Jess. I am in Hawaii. It's uh, my new home from Cincinnati. So I... I love David Spade, so I really wanted to like this more, but I don't really do awkward humor, so I didn't really like it. So I'll give it an eh, (laughs) because (laughs) I love David Spade, and yes, he was very positive, but uh, not, not my kind of humor. So I will pass it off to Mark. I am uh, Mark. I'm uh, with her, Siren Murr, <laughs> uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, second time watching the movie. First time was 21 years ago when it came out. And uh, I think one of the best things about the movie was the soundtrack. It was really fun. Um, and I guess that's to say that I did not like the movie. <laughs> Thumbs down. I'm not a huge David Spade fan. And I didn't, it, it, it just wasn't engaging to me. Okay. And I'm Mer. I'm from Cincinnati also. And I really did like this movie. It made me laugh. So it, you know, it achieved that goal of the comedy. 
Um, but I will say that I think I liked it. I, I think one of the reasons I liked it is because I was watching it through the lens of, um, well, Bill, Bill had a lot of really good things to say about it. And my friend Tina had a lot of really good things to say about it before I watched it. So I think for that reason, I was looking at it through a very positive lens, um, but it did make me laugh. So I don't know. I think maybe I would have liked it whether I heard that or not. It was a good movie, in my opinion. Uh, TC. All right. I am TC and I live on St. Croix in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And I watched a movie called Joe Dirt. <laughs> we did not mention it one time. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Welcome to our movie club where we don't even announce what we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Amateur hour. Thanks, TC. Uh huh. And I, uh, I really love this movie. Uh, my favorite quote is you can't have no in your heart because I am a yes girl. So I love that. And I love that there's so much poo humor in this movie that cracks me up a little bit because I'm 12. So <laughs> I'm going to give it two thumbs up. Whoa. Oh, I meant to give it a Whoa. thumbs up. Okay. Thanks. And next is going to be Siren Sara. Are you just going to skip right over Dino Bambino? No, someone else can call on him. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I am Siren Sara. I live in Union, Kentucky. And I've seen this movie a time or two um, because it's uh, someone else's, uh, one of someone else's favorite movies. Um, I enjoy the movie. Um, it's a little awkward at times and sometimes actually the things that happen make me feel a little uncomfortable because sometimes everyone is so mean to him and I truly get uncomfortable. But, um, but I do like the movie. Um, I just want to point out that um, I may have some fireworks in the house now, but that's, that's cool. Uh, we can talk about that later. Uh, I give it a thumbs up. And I will call on Dean. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Dean. I uh, live in St. Croix with Siren TC. And uh, I, I too watched Show Dirt. And uh, probably my, at least my third time seeing it. And um, definitely got to give it a thumbs up for me. Uh, I'm not a huge David Spade fan normally. There's just a few of his movies that I really do like. This happens to be one of them. I, I, I love all the humor that's in it. Um, it, I just, uh, I'm, I guess I got a silly personality. I don't know, but it, it cracks me up. It's a good, it's a good movie. And so I'll turn it over to, uh, Mr. Bill. Hello everyone. I'm Bill. I'm, uh, married to Sarah and Sarah. Um, and I will give this movie two thumbs up. If I had a third hand, I would give it three thumbs up. It is one of my favorite movies. Uh, it's hard for me to, to ever narrow anything down as the favorite or to list things in an order, but it, it is certainly in the, in the top five uh, or eight movies of all time. Absolutely love the movie uh, because this is a guy who has every reason in the world to just give up. His parents abandoned him when he was eight. He had bad experience after bad experience in foster homes. He was picked on by a lot of people that he came across, but yet he remained relentlessly upbeat and positive and hopeful. I think this movie is very similar to Forrest Gump, which is also one of my top favorite movies because he keeps a positive attitude and he touches people that he runs into throughout the movie and makes them better because of their interaction with him. Um, the, the guy running the Indian fireworks stand, Gert B. Frobe, uh, the woman running the alligator uh, uh, preserve, all of these people end up with better lives because of their encounters with Joe Dirt. And in spite of all these horrible things that happen to him, he's, he remains positive. To me, that is the message behind this movie. And that is why I give it 
three thumbs up. And if I had four hands, I would give it four thumbs up. Oh, Sarah, that's awful nice of you to put those thumbs up with Bill. Um, Elsie, okay, so I have I have six and there's eight of us. Two, four, six, eight. Um, just put your hand up if you gave it a thumbs down. You didn't get Mark. That's yeah, I have him. Okay. Everyone else gave it a thumbs up. I yes, gave it a like. meh. Oh, just for okay. Sunrise. If you're gonna force me to choose, it's gonna I'm gonna join Mark. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not choose. alone. All right. Even though you said you don't like David's face. Hey, the alligator girl was that Laverne? No. Mm. Oh. No. That um. I will say, I, I, I do agree with most of the people on here. Typically, I'm not a David Spade fan. There's only a couple of things he's been in that, that I really enjoyed. Um, there's a movie, Tommy Boy, but I think that's more because of Chris Farley. And even that movie overall, I'm not crazy about. There are parts of it that I think are humorous. A couple of things that, for me, that may give, it, give the movie an unfair advantage. I love convertible automobiles. And this car is filled with convert. Uh, this movie's filled with uh, convertible automobiles. I particularly love Chrysler products, and for some reason, movies with David Spade, he must love Chrysler products because there's a lot of Chrysler cars in his movies, and and the same same with this movie. So those are all things that start to, to you know, those little things like that 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 grab my attention. Well, like speaking this. of the cars, Bill, we had a question come in from. You, <laughs> if this was your movie, <laughs> would you change that? And if so, what car would you pick? Which car? Which car would yeah. we change? Yeah. Which one? Any of them, like the theme. Okay. Like if you had to choose, if you wanted to switch out the Chrysler's <clears throat> for something else, what would you, oh. would you use? Okay. Hmm. Is that directed at me or just anybody? Anyway, everybody. I was thinking I about think, it. I think that you could easily insert um, American Motors cars for this, because American Motors was kind of the underdog of the of the United of the U.S. Uh, automotive companies. It you know you had uh, what they called the big three, and then you had American Motors, and th th so American Motors is the company that made uh, Gremlins. Everybody's probably familiar with the Gremlin or the Pacer. Uh, Matador, uh, cars like that. And I think considering that his character was an underdog character, you easily could have inserted some American Motors cars in there and, and it kind of would have fit the theme of the movie. Well, if it was my pick, I would pick a Wrangler. He Wranglers all over the place. Or the Stingray. That's the only car I like. Mm. I know, but that wouldn't have fit Joe Dirt, would it? A stingray? Well, if it's all beat up. And hmm. old? I don't know. When you say stingray, you, you mean Corvette. Is it a Corvette? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> the stingray is a, a Corvette. So, so uh, Kid Rock's uh, character, Robbie, who was driving a, you know, a Firebird. Uh, Trans Am. Could have yeah. been driving a Corvette if you wanted to put a stingray in there. I, don't, I, I think uh, Kid Rock's character would have benefited from a uh, Kind of an early '80s uh, Camaro IROC Z that seemed to fit more of his. Yeah, his, uh, with like T-tops. Maybe it just kind of, and maybe it's because I had a friend growing up who had one that was kind of, kind of sketchy and douchey, and <laughs> I think it would probably fit him so much how about, better. How about the Pontiac Fiero? No, I I, I like the Pontiac. Kind of Joe Dirtish. I can't imagine his big heavy friend fitting in that Fiero as that's just a two seater. Yeah. yeah. I think a Corvette with T tops definitely would would have fit like I don't know what replacing. I just think it would have fit well like uh you know, those are yeah. very like almost convertibles, but not. <laughs> What was the car that Kid Rock was driving when Trans they had him? That, that was a Pontiac uh, Firebird Trans Am. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it had four wheels, five if you count the steering wheel. 
That's all I remember. So I just did Same. Google of um of Kevin Spade. Sorry, David Spade, whatever his name is. <laughs> and Chrysler. And he it so two headline lots of headlines came up. David Spade drops nine hundred thousand on a nineteen sixty nine Dodge Daytona. And actor David Spade climbs into a 2007 Chrysler Caliber sedan at a media something. So maybe there is something with him, but I couldn't find anything. Huh. Yeah, there's there's got to be something. There's a there there's a Chrysler product and Tommy Boy, and, and I've seen him in other David Spade movies as well. So. Hmm. I, I will say this movie we were talking about Kid Rock. There, I I can't stand Kid Rock because of this movie. No. I don't know if his music is any good, but he just seems uh, to me, he obviously has to be a jackass because he was in this movie. And uh, so therefore he is in real life. And I just can't stand the guy. When we were in uh, Nashville, he has, he has a, a bar in Nashville when we went in there and I didn't say anything at the time, but I couldn't wait to get out just because it was his place. Nothing like separating the art from the artist there. Bro. I know. <laughs> Typically, it's not a problem for me, but in this case, it is for some reason. I don't know. I think you See, need to I, give him give him a shot. Yeah. You need to give him a shot. Do I? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I actually, I'm not a That's big good. fan of his music necessarily. A few of his songs I do like, but I've seen him on a few, um, like reality shows. What What are you doing to me? Should I? Uh... Um, I count to three before I give him the shot or let him get a, a head start or just start shooting? <laughs> <laughs> just start shooting. You used to be a cop. Just start shooting. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Fire and soapbox does right. not condone any good. sort of violence. <laughs> no, he, he's actually a pretty good guy, though. Um, some of the things he's done for his hometown and stuff like that. Anyway, side side I track. I followed him in the early 2000s when his music was popular, and I had never seen Joe Dirt before last week, and I found him very unbelievable to be that jerk of a character. For so for me, I'm like he doesn't he's not playing a very good role right now because I have followed him in some of the good works he's done. So I didn't think he was a very good bad character. Anybody else? So I don't have a thought about that. I was going to change the subject. Well, wait, I have a question then. So <laughs> do you mean that you you didn't find him believable as a bad guy? Yeah. Yeah, he did he did seem like sort of a soft bad guy to me. Even though I don't know much about Kid Rock, but that's how that was like the impression I got. I think though because his face reminds me of a, this little teenage boy that I know. And so I kept picturing that little teenage boy as this mean character. And it just, I don't know. I kind of felt the same way. Like he was a soft bad guy. In the movie, I thought he was, I mean, I thought he was more of a, just a really dumbass and not so much a bad guy, but. Yeah, he was a yeah. douche. Yeah, a, he, he was a, just, he was stupid too. A dumbass bully. Yeah, yeah dumbass a, a bully. bully. He, his character, he played that character dead on like a guy that I went to high school with who actually through junior high school uh, uh, bullied me a good bit. I mean, his um, yeah. speech patterns, the way he carried himself, he was dead on. I have to believe that he and Doug hung out for a while <laughs> so that he could learn how to, how to behave like Doug. So that, I'm sure that has part of, uh, is part of the reason I- It's trauma triggering. Yeah, no you. wonder. We have several <laughs> episodes you can listen to about healing trauma. <laughs> I've listened to every Siren Soapbox episode more than that's once. That's true. Did you say more than once? More than once. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, so which is your favorite? Totally which sidetracked. My favorite? The mm -hmm. next one. Oh. <laughs> well, you're in luck. <laughs> Always looking forward to the next one. You got something on your nose right there, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> So we had a question come in from Bill. <laughs> Joe Dirt has a lot of sayings like life's a garden, dig it, or you got to keep on keeping on. 
do you have your own silly optimistic sayings that you uh spread around i have one that um i obviously got from a bob's burgers episode actually don't say it all the time but it's just cracks me up when i think about it it's uh today it's tomorrow's yesterday and it's just ridiculous today is tomorrow's that's like <laughs> hurting my brain right now Mer. so they put it on a motivational poster to help people like i don't know shrug off the bad day the and bad day. I'm like is that actually positive i'm trying to think <laughs> Like if you really love today, today you really is tomorrow's, tomorrow's yesterday. yesterday. I don't know that that's a, here's mine. Yes. 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 Lots of fun journal. Where'd you get that? Well, it came from <laughs> this place called Hodgepodge Journal Making. <laughs> I think it's got some a better name think, than that. I think it's unlimited. Think Hodgepodge, <laughs> it refers to a lodge, but it does not always. It does not always refer to a lodge. No, only, if you're Jesse Krebs. It, only if you're alone does it that's right a lot. yeah don't talk about the last episode because lc hasn't seen it i'm not yeah. talking about anything yeah what what damn it you all no, all right see it. Silly no sayings. damn it you do you have one i have to change the subject before somebody tells her no yeah well, same. No, i already know <laughs> No point in watching it now. All right. So my grandma and I kind of stole it from my grandma. She always used to say, it's a good life if you don't weaken. Wait, say that again. It's a good life if you don't weaken. Mm. It's because she liked her liquor strong. I don't know. <laughs> I don't my think I, I knew Grandma Rose to drink much. <laughs> my mom used to say, if you asked her how she was doing, she'd say she was finer than frog hair. Well, that's got to be pretty damn fine. Hmm. Frogs don't have hair. Right. I've never my, heard that. My most recent um, phrase that I've been uh, saying isn't very positive, so I'm not even sure I should say it. But I found myself saying it at work a whole lot recently. Let's hear it. Have the fuck at it. <laughs> have the fuck at it? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> I like, like it. Things aren't quite going my way or, or people are being really stupid. Have the fuck at it. Like <laughs> I told you how to do it better. Told you how it would work. Uh, so I'm working on a positive one. Do you have a positive one? Well, you know, most of the stuff for me is positive. I'm pretty positive. Bill, everything I say is positive. So let me think about what I said in the last five minutes. <laughs> except, everything I say is positive, except I hate Kid Rock. <laughs> you might not, I don't think I said hate. Did I say hate? No, no. you did not. It's pretty rare for me to use that word. It's a very strong word. I don't You use did it not right. say it. I, re I retract my statement. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bill. Continue, please. Uh, I can't remember now. I'm I'm all down now. <laughs> <laughs> what? You little shit. So well, no, I still want to hear Bill's. Come on, Bill. What, what exactly what are you you're talking doing. to, Dean? I wonder what you're doing. Oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tracy's, again. Tracy's on, trying TV. to find the uh, extension cord or whatever. The power <laughs> strip. Yeah. Power strip. <laughs> that was yeah, petting that Winston. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call it nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't think of one that I would say is a favorite. I do have a lot of different. Uh, uh, sayings are usually upbeat. I can't think of a particular one that's a favorite, but um, I I find a lot of humor in in that uh, lights a garden, dig it. Yeah. And speaking of that, if you if you watch the movie, did you notice that when Joe Dirt is a child, and he wears a, there's a couple T-shirts in particular, and there's one that's a cutoff. Um, he when he's an adult, he's wearing that same shirt obviously it's a larger version but it's the same color has the same thing on it. it's just older and faded it happens a couple times through the movie where a t one of the t-shirts he was wearing as a child he then he's wearing later in the movie as an adult huh. it, it wasn't the uh i choked linda lovelace one was it <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> I did notice that shirt. It was a red right. sleeveless shirt. Yeah. I noticed it. The, the, the two t-shirts I noticed was the Life's a Garden Dig It, which yeah. he was wearing, I think, maybe when he was uh, with the hunter or with the was either with the hunter or the old woman, the woman who, who made him uh, do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But it was one of the two. But I remember yeah. seeing that. And I was like, oh, I got to remember that. And then they they mentioned it later on in the movie. And then the I choked Linda Lovelace. Yeah, it, they didn't speak that one out loud, but yeah, that that shirt certainly did make a, an appearance for. A couple <laughs> things there, yeah. Okay, so what does that shirt mean? Um, she she's in about? films. She she's in films, oh. and she's famous for. I, she's famous for a certain film. For the. The things she can do with. Do you know the name of the film? So when we stop recording, ask me that question and I'll tell you because I, I looked it up. Okay. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it here. She's famous think, for a movie that. I think I'm picking up what you guys are laying down, just like the Jesse Crab <laughs> thing. Yeah, but there's, there's something particular about it. So ask about it when we're off the air. Okay. Is it because of this movie? I mean, Yes. <laughs> but I, I was picking up what you were laying down. <laughs> so our YouTube fans will now know. Yeah. And the rest of you, maybe not. But probably. Uh, and in case you're wondering, I didn't actually know that movie, but this one knew it right offhand. So. <laughs> what kind of boy are you dating? Oh, that's I the mean, kind of he, boy I'm dating her. He did say he watched Jay Dirt before, so. What did you say, Elsie? He did say he watched your dirt before, so maybe he looked it up back then. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. He was, he was good, you know. Yeah. So while we're being silly, there was another question that came in to us from a a, a, a listener that Joe Dirt <laughs> Dirt briefly <laughs> changes his name in the movie by adding an e to the end of it, and he's Joe Dirte, and. He is promptly told, don't church it up, boy. Your daddy named you Dirt. So if you were to change your name in a subtle way, like Dirte, what would it be? Mm. Oh, Mer's got I have one. an answer. I have an answer. So yep. my name is Mary Jean, and I would change my name to Mary Jane. Mm. I like it. Yeah. I would change the spelling of my name. My name is Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y, and I would spell it T-R-A-Y-C-E-E. Good hmm. God, why? Why? Someone, <laughs> when I was in, uh, I don't know how old I was, but we went to that one church, remember? Oh, Rick Benny, that was his name. Do you remember Rick Benny, Bill? He was the youth minister of that church. And Julie, that was his wife. He spelled it that way all the time. Gotcha. On purpose. <laughs> On purpose. So you like two E's better than a Y? Well, it's T R A Y C E E. Hmm. It's Trey C. C. No, you don't want it to be like S E A? No. But I did want to change my name a lot. Like one time I even had a little get together and we all tried to come up with new last names for me. So I that I could. That. I wasn't invited to it, but I heard about it the next day. I work. think Sarah was there. Were you there, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so nothing stuck, apparently. Mm-mm. Nope. I kept, kept my the last name that I was born with. Maybe, maybe I'd go by Sarah. Sarah? You would not. I don't, I don't like that. Make it American now. Ooh. Yeah, let's. Uh... Add an H. Oh, we don't need no stinking H's. Ixnay <laughs> on the Sarah A. Yeah, I like Sarah. If, uh, if I were going to change my name, I, I really like uh, my name because I was named after people in my family who, who I admire. Um, my great-grandfather's name was Adam, and I might use Adam because I have a lot of little wise sayings and things that came from him. I was fortunate enough to know my great grandfather the way most people know their grandfather. Um, is he? We visited him often, and he was alive until I was about eighteen. So, uh, but 
Um, another option would be, you know, uh, Siren Sara and I are married, but when we got married, we both kept our last names. But if I were to choose her last name, it would make me Bill Murray. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Would you change your middle name? Uh, to Bill fucking Murray. I was just going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. If you if you change your name to Adam, I think you have to change your middle name to Schreckengost. Good luck with that one. Yeah, I'm, you know something. Uh, anytime I've written about them, I've had to look up how to spell his name off of his obituary. You know what? Every time I write his name, I have to send a message to my brother and ask him how to spell it. And then <laughs> probably looks on his obituary and sends me a picture of his obituary. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, did you change your name? I mean, I did once when I got married, but I no, my cousin actually changed her last name um, because she got married and then she got divorced, but she changed her last name to be a mashup of the two because she figured that was a, a time in her life and deserved remembering, even though she wasn't with him anymore. Um, hmm. So her, her new last name is a mashup of her maiden name and her married last name. So she basically decided she's entering a new phase in her life and she's just gonna honor both of those last names as well, so. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Z, Remember, she told us that she changed her entire name when she decided that she was sort of done with her biological or birth family, whatever. And it's her story to tell, but I don't remember what episode that was. It was about a year ago, though. About a year ago, we recorded that episode, I think. Yeah, she said last names were, um, were based on what people did, and she was a traveler, so her last name was Traveler. Yep. Well, she's a diver now, so she should be... Z Siren diver. Z. We should reach out no. to her. Hey Z yeah. diver. Oh, Siren Z. Yeah, we'll have to get her on an episode. Mhm. Mm Maybe one about diving, since mm -hmm. we all dove the pier. Elsie, would you change your name? Um. Yes, and I'm hesitant to say to what and why around you people. <laughs> Get out of your comfort zone, my friend. Oh, okay, so you have, I'd probably you change have to it. Tell us or you have to mango out of it. So no, that's I'll true. Say it. I'll say it so that you're like, why is she hesitant? So I would change my name probably to Lori because it's really hard to say Lori with an attitude. Because I can tell when people are pissed off at me when they go, ah, Lauren. <laughs> you can go, Lori. Ew, thanks. Yeah, I'll just I change ruined it, it for you. Ruined didn't it. I? You did. You, know, you ruined everything, Mur. What the hell? <laughs> just make everything sound angry. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I can make anything sound mean because I'm a mom of teenage girls. <laughs> wow. Dina, <laughs> would you change your name? No, probably not. How about you? I like Bill's name because his initials are uh, where he was born. Oh, shit. True. True. Yeah, I was born in Washington, D.C., and those are my initials. W.D.C. are my initials. Oh. You could Mark's have done initials that. are mad. And a per coal. Per coal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that mashup. Hmm. So something oh. else on this movie that, that um, you know, if you have some time to think about it, I think it's uh, an important thing to consider is even though he was relentlessly upbeat and he put up with a lifetime of being, of adversity and being made fun of and so forth. And it was sprinkled with some good things, you know, but- It really a was. Of, a lot of it was uh, negative. And there are people, I know people like that, um, who you can tease and kid with, maybe good naturedly, maybe there's some honesty under underneath all that teasing. Um, but for everybody, it reaches a point where maybe you can't bounce back. And in this movie, 
he reached that point and stood on the edge of a bridge to commit suicide. And it was only because somebody who he had touched early in his life showed up and had him change his mind or hit a splatter at the bottom of that. It would have been a very different movie at the end. So, you know, when we sit around and we pick on people, even though we're joking and that person seems to be taking it as a good natured joke, we have to remember that um, you, know, you can push somebody too far without even realizing it. I think that came right after the BC comment. So we'll quit saying that you're old, Bill. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Sorry, keep an eye on it. Glad you, you, didn't, bridge, it. Bridges glad you didn't even mention it in this episode. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that was those were really good, great words of wisdom, though, Bill. I appreciate that. I I kind of want to challenge that. I mean, yeah, he was picked on, but he always had everything he needed throughout the, like he always had a job when he needed a job he got the car when he needed the car he, i mean he was always looking for his family but, but it was like immediately taken away from him and, <laughs> and I, he, to that point he, he always had whatever he kind of needed but i think the whole movie he needed his parents to find them and then he found them and realizes they were just a bunch of jerks and that's the thing, you know, they say that um, sometimes the thing that makes you the most unhappy is this idea of how things should be versus accepting them for how they are and finding the joy in it. So that was to me, that was kind of the, the lesson right there that he had this idea of how his parents, how his life would be or should be if he had his parents. And after finding them realized that his life was better the way it actually was. But even though he had everything he needed, it's because he went out and got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He, when he needed a job, uh, he, you know, he needed to earn $360. He said, well, that's what I need to do then earn $360. And then he found a place that paid exactly $360 and he went and got that job and um, earned that money. Was, yeah. And he was a janitor and he didn't complain about being a janitor. Not, I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a good job. It's a good job, but he took the jobs that he could get that he needed. He, he made that happen. Yeah. There was never any sitting around feeling sorry for himself. He, like you said, he figured out what he needed to do to make progress. And he made that, he took that next step every time. I think part of that is because he had an end goal his end goal was to find his parents so he was focused on something and it, maybe that's part of the reason why at the end he's like well there's nothing to live for now and i love that when brandy said at the end she's like if you grew up with them you wouldn't be the same wonderful person that you are now yeah that's a great line and it's a great message in the movie i agree and that maybe only secondary to that one is the idea the cajun gentleman that was talking to him that was mm -hmm. trying to tell him home is where you make it mm -hmm. and then right at the end brandy says you had a home all along you just didn't know it because he mm -hmm. was looking for something else and, and didn't realize he had it <clears throat> but I, I think there's just a lot of great messages in in that movie as silly and ridiculous as as it is and did you notice unicef is mentioned twice a lot movie? i know <laughs> so, what do you think this is unicef i mean that's that uh that that's an organization that I used to hear about all the time as a kid in school. We would collect money for UNICEF and then you don't really hear about them anymore unless you're watching this movie and then it comes up a couple times. So Our schools tried to get us to collect for UNICEF instead of Halloween candy. Exactly. I, mean, I remember that's why, that. Maybe that's why it's not around anymore. What kind of marketing <laughs> scheme is that? Who's going to fall for that? Well, they did that when I was a kid too. They give you this little box and you can yeah. collect money for UNICEF instead of candy. And yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you should let them see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the school's closer to you than it is to me. You can go show them. You yeah, the one you go I tell them, Bill. The one I attended, not any of the, I don't know that people do that anymore. Yeah, I haven't heard about it in a long time. I was just looking it up. UNICEF's still around. It is still yeah, around. Yeah, they are still around. I've heard of them doing things. I just don't uh -huh. think that they collect coins anymore. 
Griffin at school used to would always bring home a box in the fall sometime. I can't remember if it was UNICEF or some other charity, but it was definitely like a penny drive and collect your change and hmm. but I can't remember who it benefited. Hmm. I guess so it's all that that gives that gives me an idea since uh, we're it's July now we've got uh, about six months before Christmas. What if we all set out a jar or a box, and every time we swore we had to put money in that, and then at Christmas time we can donate it. We're gonna hmm. need a box like this big in our house. Uh, I don't have so, enough money for that. No. <laughs> Merhaj and I used to donate. Was it ten dollars or eight dollars? Every ten dollars every time we said I uh, I hate hate I hate we, anything. Yeah, then we donated ten bucks to women helping women every time. It became very expensive, but I don't think I say I hate anymore. It's I don't say it nearly as much. Well, actually, Mark and I, I'll say, I'll ask him all the time why he hates me so much. <clears throat> Harry, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's all laid back. She's yeah. I don't know. I feel like Mark was trying to figure out what she's doing too. He's I like, know. Well, Mark, Mark was wondering when this thing's gonna end so they can get on with their evening. He's about ready to break out his dirty squirt. <laughs> well, yeah, Mark, tell tell Bill about your drink. Well, I drank. I prepared a dirty squirt for this evening in theme with with uh, Joe Dirt. And honestly, my favorite scene in the movie was when he had the, he was wearing the, the bomb. Oh. And the shit bomb. The shit bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got was... two on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he made a dirty squirt and he served it to himself in a mason jar. Perfect. Very on theme. Mm. <laughs> Perfect. So if we have same drinks from here on out for getting oh there, yeah that's the new challenge 100 percent so mark's fault <laughs> it's three minutes till the top of the hour i think we've lost tracy and dean i think they're all froze up oh. but we should probably think about what movies we're going to vote on for next quarter well mary i hate to lengthen this any but did anybody go buy fireworks? Oh, oh my gosh. I forgot all about the fireworks. I failed on this challenge. I mm. failed too. So we don't have fireworks stores on the island. So I also failed. Okay. Well, we did, but my experience in particular was fabulous. And I had it was even, what? It was fabulous. And I haven't even told Sara about it yet. You go first. So I went into our uh, friendly uh, local um, fireworks store where um, there was this young kid in there and uh, who had actually heard of the movie and knew of the quote. And I read the quote to him and he looked it up as well. And then we proceeded to walk around the store looking for the strangest names of fireworks that we could find. Um, we found things like the, um, the swarming Skeeters, <laughs> the, uh, the Wicked Pissa, mm. uh, there were the whistling bottle rockets. That wasn't too too cool. The whistling moon travelers, um, the bang snaps, um, sizzling skyburst, the fat one, <laughs> the ninety second crackling assault. Oh, and here's a, a, a fave. Can you see that? The crackling ball. The crackling ball. Kenzie was lit one this year. It was called the Howling Monkey. And it was super howly. I have to say that all over again because Tracy missed it. <laughs> so I, I, buy, I did buy um, a firework. Um, and it's supposed to be really cool and really big and loud. Lots of, lots of um, big balls that go up in the air. What's it called? It's a thing. It's the thing. <laughs> Emerald something or other. It didn't have a really cool name. Mm. I feel like the whistling moon traveler sounds like a band. It does. Like a like a folk band. 
Tracy, are there any, there probably aren't any fireworks on your island either, are there? Mm -mm. <laughs> no. So I had to be in Lexington for work today and there's a little shop that is set up in an old strip mall, like a seasonal thing. And they were selling off, everything was marked down and really low. And so I stopped in there today and I went up and I took a different tact. Instead of asking for the fireworks names that Joe Dirt rattles off in the movie, I went in and I said, excuse me, do you have any snakes and sparklers? I'd like snakes and sparklers because that's my favorite, which is what the was originally in a firework stand in the movie. And the guy just looks at me, looks up at me, he says, sorry, kick and wing, we've only got the good stuff here. <laughs> I, know, the guy, I just died laughing. The guy knew the movie and, um, and just played right along. He says, sorry, kick and wing, we've only got the good stuff here. <laughs> You're making that up. What's that? You're making that up. I wish I was. It's that bad. is awesome. That is some excellent customer service. Yeah, yeah. He knew the movie. <laughs> I think a lot of people would actually know the movie. It was a very low budget movie. And uh, if, if you guys watch it again, I'd encourage you to try to find it on a DVD and look at the special features um, at the end of the DVD. There's lots of really cool stuff about what went into making the movie and uh, secrets about uh, specific scenes that you, as you watch it. It's fun to watch the movie with the commentary over top of it. David Spade does a commentary over top of it. Um, Sorry, you know, a DV what? <laughs> I bet they have that on YouTube now. <laughs> no, you have to have the DVD to get the special features with the commentary. I bet you could borrow it from the library. That's the bad thing about DVDs going out of vogue is you miss out on, you don't, you don't see the commentary or the special features like you, like you had on a DVD before. So I, I watched the Bob's Burgers movie on Hulu last week and the ending, the post credit scene is there. Good, that's good. And there, there are, there are some movies on Amazon that you can rent that have the, uh, some of the DVD features on there, like extended, uh, that's cool. Deleted scenes and things like that. It's usually a couple bucks more, but you can. Some of the some of those are there. Yeah. Now I'm going to give everybody a, a a a fair warning. There is a sequel to this movie. It is absolutely horrible. If you if you don't and I if I didn't love this movie the way that I do I think the sequel would have ruined the whole thing for me. Oh it's, really? Yes, that bad? Not, absolutely <laughs> not worth watching. Is not David Spade in it? He is. There's a different a different director, different producer. You know, everybody wanted to get together and do a sequel. Uh, Brandy is not in it directly they reference her but um it's just it's not a good movie and it kind of ruins the whole um uh, feeling behind the, the positive things behind the movie joe dirt so hmm. it's a bummer. sorry david spade but your movie your second movie was terrible now yeah, watch that one. so what are some movie ideas for next time well we're meeting in october so immediately, I think Nightmare Before Christmas. Love it. I want Big Fish. How about the crow? The what crow? do you want? Big Fish. Big Fish. Who wants Big Fish? Who wants that? Oh, I, I like them too. Yeah. Okay, maybe. What did you say you like, Bill? I like Big Fish too. That's that's a good movie. Long. Not the sequel. I don't know that it has a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have three. What else? Isn't the like second Hocus Pocus supposed to be coming out soon? We could watch the first one. Mm, Hocus Pocus was good. I don't know. I whenever I think of October, I think of baseball, but I can't can't really think of a a baseball movie that I'd throw yeah. out there. What's that one with Kevin Costner? Older on Field of Dreams. League of Our Own Field of Dreams, The Natural. Uh, the Sandlot. Tiger Town. Uh, Who else has the Sandlot? Sandlot. The sandlot. Oh, for and there's a lot for. out there, but I can narrow one down and suggest one on the site if you. 
should we put it out on the Facebook group and ask people to nominate a movie for next quarter? Yeah. No, come. Yeah, so Mark, you gotta narrow it down now. Right now? Yeah. Right Bull Durham. now. Bull Durham. I think it's the third, 30th anniversary this year. Oh, that's fun. There's a little uh, segment about it on uh, NPR Saturday, I believe, or Sunday. I have five movies. Do we want any more? Or usually we do five. Yeah, that's plenty. Anybody sad that their movie didn't get included? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yours is on there. I know. He wants all I'm, I'm of sad my, my movie didn't get selected the last two times. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one's good. Put Secret Life on there. No, don't, no put don't put it on there again. It's just like the Hall of Fame. Two, two vote, two, two ballots, and you're out. Um, we should watch it together, though. I've never seen it. Oh yeah, that's good. All right, so we have Big Fish, Nightmare Before Christmas, The Crow, Hocus Pocus, <laughs> Bull Drop. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I, uh, Bill, would like to personally thank you for supplying every one of our discussion questions for yes, tonight. thank you <laughs> and brilliant. the challenge for the movie thank you mark mm -hmm. thanks for uh giving us the bright idea of having a themed drink with every getting real club meeting mm -hmm. appreciate that <clears throat> thank you everybody for joining us tonight you can check out our website to see what we're up to next or to get over to our YouTube channel so you can see what Miss Lovelace quote reference is all about. <laughs> but go to our Getting Real Facebook page so that you can vote on the next movie and we'll get together again in October. Until next time, dive in, stay curious and be happy. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Siren Soapbox. And a special thank you to C-Strings for providing our music. Snag their latest EP from iTunes today. Follow the Sirens on all the social medias. And don't forget to tell your friends about us. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll catch you next time on another episode of Siren Soapbox.